Welcome to the Irish Tech News Podcast, where we will bring you some of the most interesting interviews and features from the world of tech. Visit irishtechnews.ie and check out our podcast section to explore all of our previous episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast using whatever your favourite app or service is by visiting anchor.fm forward slash irish dash tech dash news. Welcome to Irish Tech News. I'm Sangeeta Waldron, author of Corporate Social Responsibility is Not Public Relations. This is a special mini-series where I'm speaking with global business leaders and change makers about sustainability and ethical news. Today, I'm joined by Lee Catherine Bonner, founder and CEO of B Downtown, which is based in North Carolina, the US. Lee is a TED speaker. She's also uh, been recognized by Inc. Man- magazine as an under 30 rising star and has recently just been uh, put on to the Forbes under 30 list. Welcome, Lee. So I am so pleased to have you here, Lee, and especially because it is your birthday today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so let's just dive straight in. What is B's? downtown and what inspired you to set it up yeah so be downtown uh, well what we do at be downtown is we install and maintain beehives on corporate campuses to help uh, sustain rebuild sustainable honeybee populations while simultaneously providing year-round employee engagement and leader development programming to our partners um, I am a fourth generation beekeeper wow. so I uh, the bees run in in my blood the Flanagan so the the very <laughs> Irish side of my family three of us are born on St. Patrick's Day actually uh, they're all beekeepers so I uh, I took the inspiration from the rural side of my family and farming and agriculture and beekeeping and we brought the bees to the city Wow so you've got bees um in your DNA. That's yes. <laughs> that is really fascinating. So one of the questions I, I wanted to just quickly ask you, are bees in decline in the States? Bees really are in decline all over the world, except for really in Africa. Um, and they're a managed agricultural population though. So honeybees will never be on an endangered species list because we can multiply them as quickly as we'd like, but uh, native bees, we cannot do that too. And while honeybees and native bees are indicator species, they're also keystone species. So they're incredibly crucial to look at in regards to, they're, they're trying to tell us something is wrong in our environment and yeah. it's time for us to stop and, and listen. So while honeybees won't ever be on an endangered species list, when we lose about in the US about 30 to 40% of the honeybees every year due to a number of factors. What ends up happening is we, we split these beehives to try to build the numbers back up, but we're splitting unhealthy hives. So we're putting a bandaid on an issue, not only of the number of bees we need for agriculture, but on the issue of what these keystone species are trying to tell us desperately trying to tell us. Sure. So apart from being um, this legacy of beekeepers um, was the decline of bees part of the reason why you set up Bee Downtown? It, it definitely was. It was you know, so. I feel like I had the privilege of growing up with agriculture. I grew up in a city, but our family farm was an hour away, and to learn what it means to care for and cultivate and nourish agriculture and, and watch it grow and the work it takes to bring it from seed to harvest. I, uh, I I fell in love with the bees and the stories that the bees can share to really bring people into understanding this bigger issue around decline. Um, and so for, for me, being able to invite small bits of agriculture back into cities where people can realize, hey, I, I should be a better steward of my environment to help the bees. I had a college professor, even though I studied international studies, I took a beekeeping course while in school. And what he taught was if you just do a little bit collectively, we can do a lot. And that is very much the motto that 
I live by for really everything in my life is a little bit of good goes a long way because it creates a ripple effect that far exceeds your own bubble. Um, other people see it, other people look at it and are inspired by it and want to do better and be better as well. So the bees really act as that uh, metaphor and that driver for us in cities. I mean, it's interesting, you know, you say that the bees are telling us a story um, and they're trying to tell us something. What's one small story you can share with us right now? about? Yeah, bees? honeybees are Mother Nature's, one of her best and oldest storytellers. And so to be able to open up a hive and, and just listen um, and, and see what they what they're trying to tell us and, and the stories. I think a, one kind of going off of what we just talked about is by herself, one honeybee only makes one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in her entire life. And she doesn't typically live long enough to see the nectar she brings in turned into honey, but she does it for the good of the hive. And so if we can collectively be more like the honeybee where everything we do, we do for the good of the collective, then we can change the world. Uh, honeybees together can create over a hundred pounds of honey in a matter of months. So the, the power of we versus I is, is very beautifully shown and, and told through the eyes of the hive. Wow, that's such a beautiful story and just really powerful, brings it home, how nature is always talking to us if we just spent time to listen more. Yes. Um, and just on the listening and I guess this leads into the next question. Do you think there's a sea of change emerging in the US with the next generation of business leaders who want to create more sustainability or more CSR-led businesses? Uh, definitely, without a doubt. We are consumers and uh, entrepreneurs and really everyone. We are now judging companies based off of the impact that they have on the environment, whether it be good or bad, we're, we're looking at it, we're investigating it. And people want to be part of something that creates a change in the world. And they don't want to be part of things that harm the earth anymore. And so we're seeing companies that understand that, that are making moves that are authentic moves. I think that's a big piece of the issue is uh, if, it, if it feels inauthentic, it, it's worse than if they didn't even do anything. But if it's authentic, people are even more committed to that brand and want to work for that company, want to be part of it, want to cheer it on because it's, it's helping the greater good. Absolutely. I mean, I completely believe in that. I mean, while there are people who want to create change, what have been the challenges that you faced with B Downtown? I think, you know, when we when I first started B Downtown, one, it was never meant to be a business. It was I, I couldn't keep beehives uh, at my apartment complex. So I asked the company I was interning for when I was in college if they'd let me. And they said yes. And that's actually where Burt's Bees World headquarters was. And Burt's got bees with us. And it, it, it kind of turned into this much bigger, it turned into a business at that point. Um but nobody thought that it would work. Uh, one of the things we run into all the time still is people assume we're a nonprofit because we're mission driven. Yeah. But uh, I made the decision very early on that we can do good in the world and also do well. And it doesn't have to be a nonprofit that's working off of government funds or charity. It, you know, creating a business that leaves the world better than how we found it should be the expectation, not the exception. And we, we need to better understand that, that Be Downtown should not be this amazing startup that somehow made it that works with the largest corporations in the world, like Delta and AT&T and, you know, all MetLife and Cisco. And, um, you know, we, we shouldn't be this superstar company that somehow made it as a social enterprise. We should be what the expectation is we should be the norm yeah. uh, right now we're this exceptional company and I, I would love to be normal <laughs> yeah no I, I completely I, I I get that I mean there are so many companies where well I was just thinking that there is this kind of thought that when you are CS led you can't be profit making you can't right. be 
a successful business um you're you're a not-for-profit or you're live you know you have lots of uh fundraising or grants but i think um you're showing the way you're leading the way um and it's great because you're going to be inspiring the next generation of business leaders as well that's that's the hope it's it is tricky when people think you're a nonprofit um and to navigate that world or to say you know our return on investment is you know it is one sustainability and helping create stable environments within our communities that are healthy but it's employee engagement and it's leader development and employee retention and the the roi on that can just get a little bit trickier than simply buying carbon offsets for sustainability um but i believe the cultural impact that the bees have for the employees and the, the company is is bigger than what a company would do if they simply bought carbon offsets. Uh, the bees become part of the culture of these businesses. It, it fundamentally changes the way people see their company uh, when, when the bees come onto these campuses. Wow. I mean, that's uh, in what way do you see that change? Yeah. One, if uh, somebody was crazy enough to say yes to putting bees on a campus, then maybe yeah. somebody else's idea. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what isn't as crazy? Um, but two, again, it's that storytelling. It's that, you know, everything we do for the good of the hive, honeybees move towards stressors. They don't move away from them. They move as a unit. They have inherent trust. You know, the beekeeper enables the good of the hive. A, a good leader enables the good of their team uh, to be their best selves. And there's there's all of this, these analogies that resonate so deeply in the corporate world that people could never see the bees ever being taken back off the campus. You know, the, they get the honey from the hives. They get to do all of the training and the classes. We'll go to school systems that they support. And, uh, and, and so there's just, there's, there's so much that becomes part of the, the culture. They now have, some of our partners have bee teams where they're the teams that are, uh, are all the bee promoters. And they've got, uh, you know, we've got one company that they rerouted an entire research team for their data for good. Um, it's all around man looking at the data that you can pull from a beehive um, and, and they just won a huge award for it. So there, there's so much that can be done where the bees, um, I'd say the bees touch each person in a different way, Yeah, but everyone is transformed by the impact that they, they're, they're small, but mighty little creatures that get brought on these campuses. I mean, you, you're taught, you know, I'm already, I'm already thinking, you know, I'm looking at bees in a different way. I mean, are they good networkers? They must in be. regards to the way, I mean, I guess with bees, they, they work collectively in a hive. Yes. So I guess Absolutely. that translates to teams about networking, you know, working together and, you know, joining the dots in other ways. Yes. So honeybees, one, the girls are the, the workers in the hive. And so they do pretty much all the work <laughs> and uh, they have the second most complex language of communication besides mammals. Uh, there's 65,000 bees that can be in a hive at pretty much its peak capacity. Mm. And the way they communicate, they can come to an agreement or a consensus at really past the point of agreement, but to a consensus where even if some of the bees had different ideas about where to go, yeah. They're able to come to a consensus and all move forward as a unit in as, sl as slow as three days, as fast as a couple hours, um, which is fascinating that, you know, that many beings can come to a consensus that quick. And it takes us so long in our corporate worlds to, to move in any direction. Um, but worker bees to the day have different job designations. So uh, their first job, they're cleaning cells. And then when they turn three days old, they switch to the next job. The, the jobs get more and more um, uh, dangerous as the bees get older. So the oldest bees are the ones that forage and leave to collect nectar and pollen and resources and come back. But if something were to go wrong in where the forger bees were, maybe they got sprayed and they all died, they didn't come back. The colony has the ability to move bees through different jobs faster in order to ensure that at the end of the day, the job that needs to get done still gets done. Uh, if something happens and the, the bees on the inside of the hive were to decrease drastically in numbers, the worker bees can come back and revert, revert back to older jobs wow. to 
continue to make sure the hive thrives. They're not as good at them anymore. They they haven't. Uh, they're you know, they've actually some of the structures and things have changed in their bodies where they don't produce as much beeswax as a younger bee would. But but they can still do the job. And to me, especially during COVID, that has been such a learning lesson and a teaching opportunity where nobody's too good for anything. You step up to the plate, you, you, you work and maybe you're not as efficient as someone else, but you, you get it done for the team. You don't back away from the stressor. You address it head on and you adapt. Honeybees are beautifully adaptable to different situations. Um, so that that's another kind of learning lesson that's that's more of a COVID appropriate one, I yeah. guess. <laughs> well, as you were talking, I was thinking, wow, maybe we need uh, bees to govern the world because yes. <laughs> we'd, be, we'd be doing far better than what we're all doing right now. Yes, honeybee democracy. Yeah, thing. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> tag name and tagline. <laughs> What's been the impact of uh, Be Downtown with local communities? So I'm not talking about where you're operating, but just the wider local community. Yeah, so uh, when you in, when we install a hive on a corporate campus, those bees start to immediately impact a three mile radius. So it's over 18,000 acres of the community that the bees start to positively impact. Um, and the what happens is, is our corporate campuses, they don't want to just put the bees there. They then want to replant with more native plants. They want to have orchards and gardens put in. And and so as more and more companies in a city get hives, their three mile radiuses begin to overlap and create a corridor. And everything we know about uh, native pollinators and pollinator species is corridors are essential. So what we've been able to do is have these businesses each of their three mile radiuses overlap to create some of the largest corridors of single management honeybees in the country. Um, our, our, the largest one in the country is one of ours and it's in Raleigh, Durham, and it's over 62 miles long and MetLife, a very large corporation in the US, uh, was closed the gap for it. Um, wow. The bees coming in con- was the final connector to these uh, two, like you know, about 30 mile pieces. Um, And so then all of a sudden, it's not just the bees that have more food, it's all of the pollinators that have more food. There's less spraying of chemicals uh, in our cities because our corporations don't want to harm the bees and now all of the pollinators. So it's again, like I said before, what my professor taught in college is that ripple effect of if you just do a little bit collectively, we can all do a lot. Wow, I just love that. I mean, I can just see the ripple effect I mean, the orchards, it must be the biodiversity in the, in the local area must be so much better uh, than it, it was. It before. is. And, and people, you know, these are massive corp delta, you know, there's in a normal world, there are tens of thousands of people that, that are on this headquarters in Atlanta and they, uh, the employees get to see it. They get to see the gardens. Now they get to see the the bees and they go home and they plant more gardens and, and they are, you know, have pollinator hotels out or become beekeepers. And so it's not just that three mile radius. It's that people come together to learn at their place of work about stewardship. And then they go back home and they want to continue that stewardship beyond just their place of work, but their place of work has gifted them the yeah. opportunity to learn. Amazing. I'm just talking about learning. Um, Have you got plans to roll out to other types of organizations such as schools, colleges? Yeah, we uh, so we just launched the BDT Leadership Institute. So we have our corporate hive program, which is where all of the the hive lives on sites are managed that can get a little tricky with school systems and again a lot of it is in regards to funding and and the cost of the program but the BDT Leadership Institute is all based in what is called biomimicry it's typically done in engineering so it's taking and looking at naturally occurring processes to help solve problems in our world so if you think about like birds of flight and airplanes and aerodynamics so many airplanes the wings are tapered like certain birds wings and you take inspiration from that to help create and solve these engineering problems we do it from the B standpoint of leader development and building high performing teams. So that is something that we have been looking at working with universities on and uh, schools on around storytelling and, uh, and, and learning how to lead through the eyes of a hive. And that's something that we can easily scale anywhere around the world for corporations that want to learn 
from the bees. And it's what's great about it is the bees are not threatening to anyone. It's not like they have somebody, you know, a facilitator in front of them telling them what they need to do. It's that Mm -hmm. they're getting to open up a beehive and play with the bees. And the bees are showing them what happens when you lead and you work as a team. And, And those lessons resonate so much deeper with people through the experience of learning rather than just being told what to do. Oh, absolutely. I think we're all, we all love stories, don't we? We, 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 we're, you know, humanity has been brought up on stories. Um, yes. I just never realized that bees actually are storytellers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very powerful ones. They are. Yeah. So you mentioned um, when you were speaking about rolling this out globally, um, I was going to ask you, are there any other U.S. businesses using nature to help strengthen leadership and create positive impact. And I was just thinking, not just in the U.S., but, you know, around the world, are there other organizations? That's a great question. Um, There's So there are biomimicry institutes. Again, many of those, and they're they're amazing. I'm just in awe of all of them. Very many of them are revolved around engineering, though. So working with, you know, like, product and rapid prototyping and how do you create more aerodynamic airplanes and and things like that. Um, In regards to the bees and leadership, not, not that I know of, honestly, one of my downfalls as an entrepreneur is I don't necessarily do a ton of research on things before I dive into it. I, I go with gut checks and it felt like real like to enough. build this. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, that's very true, actually. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big gut person and yeah. I loved learning from the bees. So in, in my mind, there, there may be other, I think actually people do this with horses. Yes, um, they do. Horse therapy and leadership around horses. So yes, with horses, but I I don't think with bees. I think we we might be the first the first business on on that front. Yeah, I know I'm I know people who do leadership through horses, but what you're saying is the impact with bees um is not just the teaching but it's putting back into the the local uh, biosphere, the local, uh, you know, the local community, it's the growth of the, the, you know, nature, um, Yes. which you, I mean, horses are lovely, but you don't really have that, I don't think that kind of footprint with it. Right. Footprint. And you don't have to be a beekeeper, you know, once you take these classes, and you, we actually encourage people not to because it's, it is a lot of work. And while it has become in the media, you know, uh, touted as a, a great hobby, it is a great hobby if you understand that you are getting involved in agriculture and you can't yeah. just put a beehive in your backyard and walk away. That's not stewardship. Um, but anyone can plant a garden. Anyone can feed yes. the bees. And so we always encourage people, you know, create more diversity in your cities and you can do that with your plants and picking the right plants in your cities. And every city has resource resources for it and garden clubs and it, extension agents and um so we we encourage people to help feed the bees that are already there help make them healthy and everyone can do that even if you just have a a small balcony you can you can put something out there in a pot to help feed the bee or just water to help give them give them water too when it's hot outside Mm -hmm. small acts can make big differences in the world oh absolutely Oh, I completely agree with you there. I mean, I would love to see you here this side doing something sort of, I don't know, be downtown London or be downtown. We would UK. love it. Because <laughs> uh, I just think it's, from what you've said, it's been so powerful. And also during these COVID times, we've been spending more times in our gardens. You know, there's more appreciation, more love for nature. Yes. And um, my, my favorite word is uh, cultivate. We used a lot at Be Downtown and the root of the word means a deep sense of adoration. And it's an agricultural word, but it's used in so many different ways as well. And, um, you know, to, to deeply adore something means you begin to nourish it. And when you you give and you give and you give to nourish and cultivate rather than taking uh, and, and taking from it, you you begin to learn what it means to be a steward and to create 
something bigger than yourself. And so we, you know, we, we always encourage people to cultivate the things in their life that they love. And during COVID, a big one for people has been gardening. It's been such an outlet for, for so many people to just get their hands dirty and, and be connected and, and rooted in, in the earth. And uh, it will be, it's been, it, you know, nature has been here far before us. Yeah. It will be here long after us. So to learn from it and to listen to it and to take time for those moments that matter to really sink in is, is so important for all of us. Absolutely. I mean, I've just, as you said, I have deeply adored just our conversation this afternoon. I've really enjoyed <laughs> learning uh, from you. So how should people connect with you, Lee? Yes, we would love for people to follow us on Instagram. That's probably our biggest platform. It's at B-E-E downtown. Our website is B-E-E hyphen downtown.com. And then my personal Instagram is at L-E-I-G-H underscore underscore Catherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for uh, Thank sharing you. your bees storytelling. I mean, I'm in awe of that and I'm going to go away and do some research myself. Well, if you have any questions, follow-up questions, let, let me know. I'm happy to be the crazy bee lady and answer for you <laughs> after this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the latest Irish Tech News podcast. Check back every day for the latest episode. You can follow us on Twitter at Irish underscore tech news. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Irish Tech News. On LinkedIn, linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash Irish dash tech dash news. On Instagram, instagram.com forward slash Irish Tech News dot IE. And on TikTok, tiktok.com forward slash at Irish Tech News.